What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com back with another Blender architectural modeling tutorial for you. So um, you guys have been asking me a lot about ways to create different kinds of architectural models and how we can use Blender in order to create models for architecture. So this is probably going to be several different videos about different common things you want to do in architecture. In the first video I wanted to talk a little bit about some different ways you can create walls inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this inside of Blender. You're gonna have to kind of pick the one that you like the best. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can create walls, and then you can kind of decide what's gonna be your favorite and what you can use inside of your workflow. So the easiest way to create walls inside of Blender, if you have a simple shape, is to use a cube. So if I do a Shift A, and then I add a cube, and then we're gonna move it up a little bit, and we're gonna move it over a little bit, and and see, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in edit mode. So I'm just going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And we're just going to move this along the x-axis, move this along the y-axis. Whoops. Like this. So let's say you had a simple room like this. What you could do is you could set this cube up so that the outside of it fits the outside of your, uh, so that it fits the outside of whatever shape you're trying to create. And then you can delete out the face on the top. So you can just select it, hit the delete key, and delete this face. And so I would probably delete out the floor as well, because what we're going to do is we're going to add a modifier in order to add the thickness to our walls. So probably what I would do is I would delete this floor model out as well. And then if I had a floor, I would just have it in here as a separate plane. But what you can do now is you can take these walls and you can go over to your modifiers and you can add a solidify modifier. And you can add a thickness of whatever you want your wall to be. So if these are going to be like six inch walls, you can just add a thickness of six inches. And so you can use this in order to quickly, quickly create walls inside of Blender. So this is probably my least favorite way of doing this, but you can definitely do this if you just want to use that cube, not mess around with this too much. Note that if you want this to be actual geometry in here, you probably are going to need to apply this modifier in order to make this the full on geometry. Just note that you can't adjust the modifier once you've applied this. And so then another way you could do this if you wanted to is you could also use a plane in order to do this. So let's say we were to do a shift A, we were to add a plane in here, and we'll just move that along this axis right here. What you could do is you could tab into edit mode. And so what we can do is we can select our different parts and pieces. So for example, let's say that we, I was to come in here and select this edge, I could move this edge to wherever I want it to be, right? And uh, one thing to note, and I may make a separate video about this, is you might want to think about if you're trying to match lengths and other things like that, turning your snap mode on and setting this to vertex. So if you snap this to vertex, what you can do is you can use this in order to snap your different edges so that they're aligned with other objects in here. We'll talk more about that in a future video. But let's say we were to take this and we were to move the edges around, maybe add like a loop cut or something like that. And then we could delete out some of these vertices or these edges. So I'm gonna delete those, I'm gonna delete these. We'll delete the edges and then we'll probably have to select all of this and tap the F key in order to fill it in. But now what we have is we have a shape that can work as a floor plan. Well now I can extrude that along the Z axis just like this. And then I'm probably going to delete out my faces again, just like we did before. And so then we could add our solidify modifier to this. And uh, we'll go ahead and give it a thickness of six inches. And notice that you can set this so that it goes out or in by setting this offset value. So I'm gonna enter offset value of one. And then also notice because we have this extra edge in here and over here, this isn't extruding into the right thickness. So just make sure you check the box for even thickness when you do this. So you can adjust this, but you can use this in order to create your walls to whatever thickness you want. So that's another way to do this. Neither one of these is really my favorite way to do this because they're not very precise. So the next two ways, at least to me, are going to be a lot more precise and they're really gonna help you a lot more. And so the next thing you could do is you could come in here and you could add a cube. So you could do a shift A and you could add a cube. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to set this so that it has a size that's aligned with what we want our uh, wall thickness to be. So let's say we have a six inch wall, we're gonna set our cube thickness to six inches when we create this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this over here. 
I'm going to tab into edit mode real quick. I'm just going to move this so that it aligns over here, and we're going to turn our snapping back on. So I'm just going to move this up. We're going to make sure that we set this to vertex snapping. And I've basically set this so it's the same height as this wall. And then you can come in here and you can move and extrude these edges in order to create your walls. So let's say, for example, that uh, we wanted to build like a 10-foot wall over here. So I'm going to set my length inside of my scene units to feet, but then I'm just going to move this out using the move tool 10 feet. And I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to set this to negative 10 feet like that. But then let's say I have another wall on the end. Well, I can just extrude this out another six inches. Like this. And then I can extrude this to make my next wall like this. So you can see how by using that extrusion length like this, we can actually create our walls in here. So you can see how you can use this to quickly create your walls inside a blender. And so I think most of the time what people want to do is they want to come in and they just want to draw out basically edges that align with the size of your walls that you want to put in here. And so there's a couple different ways that we could do this as well. We could insert a plane and then delete everything as a vertex, or we could enable an add-on called Add Mesh extra objects. So what that's going to do is that's going to give you extra objects when you do a shift A in order to add something. So what we want to do is we want to do a shift A once we've enabled that and under mesh you see how there's more options in here when I enabled that? Well what I want to do is I want to add a single vertex. And so when I add a single vertex what that does is that basically gives me something that I can work from inside of my model. So I can now take that vertex I'm going to move this over a little bit just so you can see it. Maybe align it with this edge right here. You can see how what that did is that gave me a vertex. Well now I could extrude that vertex along this axis to whatever my thickness is going to be. So in this case I'm going to do a 0.33. But then you can take both of those and you can extrude them along an axis to whatever the length is that you want it to be. So um, again if we did a 10 foot wall you could extrude this down just like this. And so notice how we can use vertex extrusions in order to extrude this out so that we can get the wall that we want. Once you've roughed out what this is going to look like, you can just select it all. So you can do an A, and then extrude that up on your Z axis. You may need to come in here and fill in one or two of these. So this one, for example, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select all the vertices. I'm just going to tap the F key in order to fill that in. But notice how that now gives me walls inside a blender that I can use um, to create my plans or really whatever it is that I want to do. So another way that you can do this is you can use an add-on. So Blender has an add-on built in that allows you to create different walls. So it's called Archimesh. So if you go into your preferences under add-ons and you look for Archimesh, you can see how there's an option in here for Add Mesh, Archimesh. And so what Archimesh is going to do is now if I tap the N key, it's going to give me a Create option down below. It's going to give me an option for Archimesh. And you can select the option for a room. And so what the room option is going to do is that's going to allow you to use these tools in order to create a room. So for example, what it does is it starts by creating a wall. Well now, I can take the wall And I can set a length, then I can add walls to this. So you can see how what this is doing is this is letting me add walls in here. Um, and you can see how this sets the number of walls that are in here. So if I do like a negative 15, or I guess it's going to be a positive 15, what that's going to do is that's going to create my walls in here for me. So it creates a wall model, but then you can also use this to create a floor as well. But then you can click on these walls and you can still edit them. Then notice that it also gives me the ability to add thickness. 
And so notice how this lets me dynamically adjust the length of my different walls inside of my model. There's other options in here as well. So you can set different angles for your walls and other things like that. So you can set if they peak, if they have a different height, other things like that as well. But this allows you to kind of live update all of your different walls inside of Blender. So um, if you're looking for a more advanced tool, you can start with ArchiMesh. That one is free and built in. And then there's another one called ArchiPack. And so what ArchiPack is, is it's a much more advanced tool for creating walls inside of Blender. And so I will link to this page in the notes down below, but this is a much more, um, this is a much more detailed tool set for creating different kinds of walls and architectural models inside of Blender. And uh, so this has both a free version and a paid version. So um, you can check either one of those out. I think it gives you a comparison on the features page down below of what the difference is in here. So you can see those down below. And so what Archipack does is it gives you a number of different options that are really more complex or more, um, it gives you a number of more robust options for adding different walls. So I can do a shift A for example, and uh, if we, uh, let's see if we scroll down a little bit, you can see how Archipack gives you an option to add different beams and trusses and roofs, all sorts of different things like that. You can add a simple wall and uh, you can see how this pops up a little, uh, this this pops up a little window with some presets, but then you can click on this and you can add this wall in. Well, what that does is that allows you to edit these in real time. So not only can you click and drag these edges like this um, in order to adjust these, you can also click on the values. So if I click on this wall and click on this value, I can type in a new value and hit the enter key. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to live update my walls. So say for example, you wanted your wall to be a little bit thicker, we could just type in a new value and it's gonna thicken that wall even more. So, and then I can use this in order to start adding additional wall pieces in here. So I can add an extra wall segment in here and then I can also click and drag in order to adjust the length, but I can also adjust the direction. So what I can do is I can use this to quickly add in and adjust these different wall pieces, just like this. So you can adjust the wall. There's also an option in here to draw a wall, but this also gives you the option to just draw a wall. So you can do that by selecting a preset and then clicking a point. And then notice how this tool actually stays live. So you can actually use this in order to add walls in just like this. And then notice how if I tap the C key, it automatically closes in the gap right here. But then this wall that I drew, all of these are now live editable. So I can either click and drag in order to make adjustments like this, or I can type in values. So and you can see how when I type in values, these walls are going to adjust live. So this is a very robust toolkit. I'm gonna to get more in depth in this. I may do a full series on Archipack. I haven't really decided yet. It kind of depends on what you guys tell me that you want, but this is a very powerful tool for creating and drawing walls inside a blender. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit about how to create openings for windows and other things like that inside of our walls. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this idea, what you think about these methods for creating walls. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.